if we build the kiln to make our own bricks, I'm sure we'll make a lot of money every year. Xiaowan! Huh? I want to have a new cave house for the three of us. What I want is to find a place for a kiln to make bricks so our family won't be poor again for the rest of our lives. What are you thinking? It takes money to make more money. Just think about it, Xiaolian. When we have more money, we'll have a new house. I want to live in a new cave house. I can't stand it any longer. You're going to get it from me. I still want one, even if Say you Say another word. Me. I dare you, Xiaolian. Xiaolian! Xiaowan, what are you shouting for? Aren't you embarrassed? Why did she leave on her own? Don't worry about her. She makes me so mad. What's the matter? I told her I wanted to use the money that we earned to build a kiln for bricks. But she's insisting on a new cave house. Don't bother helping out. When I get home, I'll talk to her. How can I not? Huh? A married couple to discuss plans together. If Shulian is right, you must listen. Don't make decisions you'll regret later on. Let me tell you my plans. Listen, the moment I came back, I went to Uncle Futang first. I suggested the brigade start a large brick and tile factory, but Uncle Futang didn't agree with me. So I thought, maybe I can do it myself. Although I can't build a large factory, I can still run a brick kiln by myself. With all the women and men in their family, we have enough labor. <laughs> We will definitely make money in a year, I know it. Don't worry, Father, it won't disrupt our work in the fields. If we can't manage, we'll hire people, what? all right? What is that? Hire people? That's right. Wouldn't we be like the landowners of the old society? Oh, Father, times are different now. I mean, why are you still thinking like that? No one talks about grabbing the capitalist tail these days. As long as you don't break the law or commit a crime, you can do whatever you want. We're just making money. If you don't believe me, ask Xiaoping. I'm sure he'll agree with me. I can accept that Xiao Lian is against this, but as long as you agree, I'm fine. What, you don't agree with me? Let me ask you. How much has she suffered since she married? Huh? When we were dirt poor, she would return to Shaanxi just to get money, huh? Just to help us out, Xiao Lian. <sighs> Life is much better now. You can't just do this to her. Father, please, let's not bring up the past again. I'm not a child anymore. I just need you to agree, then it's all settled. I'm with Julien on this. <laughs> Come on, what's wrong with you, huh? Here. Here you go. Uh, I have a question. What do you think is the best thing in the world? I don't know what. Making your money grow. Stop doing that first. Here. That's why. One piece becomes two. Two become four. Four become eight. It's just like a hen laying eggs, one egg after another forever and ever. Isn't that great? Do you really think it's that simple? If you want a hen to lay eggs, you have to make a nest for it. The brick kiln is the hen's nest, all right? Why worry about not having eggs then? Save so the eggs for Huzi, all right? I'm living in a pigsty right now, and you're talking about eggs? Just think about it. I transported bricks for a few months, and I earned 2,000 yuan. If we have our own kiln for making bricks, don't you think we'll earn more money? Are you that foolish? I just want to live in a new cave house. Let me start the brick kiln first, please. I'll make you a new cave house by the end of the year, all right? Stop lying to me, Xiaowan. Ever since we got married, you've been telling me you would make a new cave house. It's been a long time. Where is it now? I told you, end of the year. Well, let me tell you. I'm obsessed with money. If you were to lose this money, by doing business or by squandering it, then I'm scared. I'm scared I won't even have a pigsty to live Why would in. you think that I'd lose it? Chao oh, Look. Stop arguing, both of you. Just let the girl cook. Your grandmother is hungry. I'm not eating eggs. No. Brother? Brother! What? What have you been doing? Look. Now to manufacture... <laughs> Wait! This is a rare find! Where did you get this? I made a special trip to Shigeje Commune. My schoolmate's father works in the commune's brick hill. I borrowed it from him. Good, good, good. This is great. Wait, why didn't you tell father you were going out, huh? Don't make him angry. Since I stopped being a teacher, I seem to irritate him all the time. So I try to avoid him. Just focus on this now. Help me start up this brick kiln. No problem. I'll help you. Listen. Your yes? sister-in-law still lives. 
Her doubts over this brick kiln. Help me persuade her, will you? Oh, all right, don't worry. <laughs> come on. Let's go home and eat. All right, come. Are you eating or not? <sighs> She's talking to you. I have no appetite. Who'd say? Here. You know... Listen, Shilliam. I think starting up a brick kiln is a good idea. Oh, is that so? Why is it a good idea? First, policies at the national level have become less stringent lately. Notions like speculation and capitalist tales don't exist anymore. So in terms of policy, it's not a problem. Second, there's construction all over the place. And what I can tell from that is, construction in the city means there are work sites all over the place. Even in our villages too. Those with money all want to build their cave houses of their own. And those require bricks. See, when a teacher speaks, it's just so different. I can understand. Xiaoping, please go on, go on. Third, I think building a brick kiln is a good opportunity for the family. There are lots of people who want to build a brick kiln, but they either don't have the capital or the technology. But see, my brother has both, and it's true, he has everything figured out. Let me put it this way. If you let someone else build a brick kiln first, you might end up with regret for hesitating. What you said sounds reasonable. Why don't you just give it to me straight? Will it be profitable or not? In my opinion, yes. All right, fine, let's do it. What? Wait. Here. Listen, Sholian. When I say it, you won't believe me, but when it's Xiaoping, suddenly you're convinced? Xiaoping is more educated than you are, and he knows more. So I take it you agree now? Yes, I do. Good. I've been dying for hours to hear you say that. From this moment on, my brother and I will be busy with a brick kill. Uh, wait a minute. But under one condition. One condition? What would that be? Promise me first. All right, just tell me. When you make money, build a new cave house at ah, once. Ah, no problem, no problem. As long as we start this brick factory and create a brick kiln, there won't be problems anymore. Oh, I'm so hungry. What are you looking at, huh? I think you intend to take this piece of land and use it, huh? To build your kiln. <laughs> That's right. Isn't this the land our family secured, father? It's close to that barren hill. Clay will be easy to get. Are you out of your mind? What is land for? Peasants are rooted in the land. It's for growing grain. You can earn money and then buy grain. Food will definitely not be a problem. <laughs> we were born peasants. Buying grain with money? Aren't you ashamed? And once money loses its value, it's not worth the paper you wipe your butt with. Huh? What's grain for? Grain is food. It's food you can eat. Without grain, you might as well eat trash. Come on. I'm warning you. Don't you dare do anything to my land. I won't agree to it. Father, calm down, will you? Would you just listen to me first? Oh, Fugao, I'm in. Perfect timing. I'm building a brick kiln, and I plan to put it right on this part of my family's land. I'm in. You help me lay the foundation, all right? Fugao, you go contact the coal guy. Uncle, there's stuff for you to do, too. Xiaoping, you should come with me later. Xiao we have to, uh, what? When you saw Aimin and Fugao arrive, you were overjoyed, weren't you? Yes, very much. But we're here to put a damper on these plants of yours. We're not here to help you, but to oppose you. These two are against you, too. Xiaoan, I'm sorry, but we can't agree with you this time. But why not? The papers explicitly state that contracted land can only be used for specific operations, all right? This land can only be used for planting grain, not for running brick kilns! The central government policy approves of autonomous management. This is it! Xiaoan, he's afraid you might make a mistake again. So he asked us to talk you out of it. Talk me out of what? We know that you want to start a business that will benefit all of us. And that you will let us have a share of the profits. Yes! <laughs> but now is not the time for it! You should start construction only after it's approved. We won't stop you then. Then we can come help you. That's right, Shoan. There's only so much land here. If you build that kiln on your land, how are we supposed to grow crops? I'm telling you, everyone in the team is against you this time. Listen. I Brother. Uncle Lu Qiang and the rest are right this time. Shoan. I'm not envious of you making money, 
I know I lose nothing if you become rich. But I know a lot about these policies, and I know that you're making a mistake! You see that? Everyone's against it. You won't succeed at all. Let's go. Shall I? Think about it. Come on. But it's my own family's land! What am I doing wrong? Listen to us! What's wrong with me building a brick kiln on my own? Just listen to them, all right? I'm in! You're leaving too? Brother, don't torture yourself. If we're not allowed to use our own land, fine. But isn't there a barren hill at the back? What if you contract that land? Wouldn't that solve the problem? Contract the hill, you say? Yeah. That's right! And this means there's still a way to build it? There's still hope! We can do it! We can still do it! Father! <laughs> Uncle Lutiang! We can still build the brick kiln! There's a way! Wait up! Oh. I'm going to contract the barren hill next to our land. This brick factory can be built. Don't worry about it, Father. You'll definitely have grain to eat. I promise you that. Don't worry, Father. Tian Runya and Li Shengxian, who had lost a leg, had lived together for quite some time in their humble house. During this long period of time, Runya had began to adapt gradually to this sort of family life. At first, of course, living together as husband and wife was, for a long time, far from perfect and oftentimes stressful. And that was because her husband was, after all, physically disabled and therefore needed much attention. Am I good, Runya? You're good. You're good. Eat some more. Runcha? Hmm? Where are you taking the goods? To Huang Yuan. Huang Yuan? Ah, Shangxian. I remember you telling me once. Wang Yuan was a good place. I don't remember. Don't you remember? Runsha, your brother-in-law used to tell me that there was a market on the road to Wang Yuan. And a stage, too. Every time there was a farmer's market, people from the village would come and join the fun. There'd be lots of people watching the opera. The young ladies would be all dressed up and would strike a pose, waiting for cheeky photographers from the county to take their photos. Isn't that right? You still remember. I remember everything you say. Here. Not only that, I also remember you telling me that someone had built a temple at the side of the stage. Really? There's a temple too? Actually, I find it strange, too. Times have really changed. Now that policies have eased, people build temples. The county and commune don't interfere anymore. And if they don't interfere, does this mean all ruined temples can be rebuilt now? Oh, isn't there a temple in Shuangshui village? Shangxian, shouldn't it be rebuilt? Shangxian? Huh? Yes. <sighs> Here. No, thanks. I'm full. I'm sleepy. I'll go lie down for a while. But you barely touched your food. I'm all right. Uh, let me help you. No, it's okay. Keep Runchang company. Runchang, eat some more. Sure. <sighs> Sister? Go ahead and eat. You have to be on your way soon. I'm going to the hospital. I have to ask about his prosthetic leg. I hope he can still drive after putting it on. Hurry and eat, don't waste time. Yes. Be careful, okay? You've helped him drive for a while now. He said that people your age 
tend to be careless and get into accidents easily, so be careful. <sighs> this is just like your life. You think you understand it, but really, in reality, you still don't. <sighs> Go on. I'll get going then, sister. Such is the irony of life. In our brief yet deceivingly lengthy sojourn on Earth, we work hard in search of happiness, something by which we find fulfillment. But we often let it slip by, sometimes without us noticing. And when we've finally exhausted our precious youth on everything life set out for us, and wrinkles begin to gradually creep upon the corners of our eyes, only then might we perhaps understand, even just a little, what it truly means to be alive. As far as Runshan was concerned, he was not content with the work the state arranged for him. Ideally, he would have liked for nothing more than to be a simple driver. In fact, he had long been able to drive on his own, like his brother-in-law Sheng Xiang. After Sheng Xiang's accident, he took over the job formerly meant for his brother-in-law. I've eaten already. I, 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 I'm full. Why are you stuttering now? I, 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 I get like this when, when I'm nervous. I, I, I've had this since I was a kid. I got better. Now, now that I'm seeing a former classmate, I, I, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> hey, sit down. I'll cook some dumplings for no, you. No, don't bother. I've eaten no, really. No, I don't believe that. We were classmates. Don't be a stranger. Sit down. What are you doing here? Just passing by. Do, do do you live nearby? In the valley over there, about three miles from here. Uh, then then this child is. My son, Yang Yang. He's almost two. I know what you want to say. My situation, it's a long story. I've broken up with Wu Yang Min. I married here and had this child. My husband died while building our cave house. Excuse me, a plate of dumplings, please. Okay, I got it, please wait. Hong Mei, is the road to your village tight? Enough for two wheeled carts. C can a truck pass through? Yes. The rich people in our village use cars to transport coal. Great then. I'll take you home later. We can use the truck. You can try? <laughs> well, not bad. I see my former classmate has ambition. <laughs> no, I'm just a peasant. I'm just helping out my brother-in-law. Whatever the case is, 
In this mountainous region, those who drive are popular. For a peasant woman such as myself, a driver like you is an extraordinary person, truly. <laughs> oh, oh, yang yang, are you hungry? You want some milk? Let's have some milk. Come in, all right? An incredible wave of sadness washed over his mind and formed a lump in his throat. In the last few days, he had consecutively witnessed misfortune and suffering in the lives of the people he encountered on his way. It made him emotionally exhausted. It filled his soul with profound grief. From that moment on, his understanding of life would no longer remain superficial. A strong desire to help other people surged within him immediately. He wanted to help the unfortunate Hong Nan and the young boy she had under her wing. you became a teacher after graduating? What happened? In the second spring after graduation, the children of the brigade officers ended up returning to the village as well. So my teaching post naturally went to them instead. I wasn't really very upset at the time. From the day I broke it off with Gu Young Min, I felt that my fate was already set in stone. The boy's father was introduced to me by a relative. He was a local primary school teacher at the village. I had no work at the time, so I thought I might as well consent. We got married at once. I threw a sling bag over my shoulder and came to this strange place, all on my own. We got married shortly after. Runsha, do you think... I may have been a little too hasty. Well, fortunately, I lived a comfortable life after my husband and I married. He was a permanent teacher then, an honest man, and he was good to me too. More importantly, this was a different county. You probably heard of the incident concerning me stealing the handkerchiefs. At that time, all I thought about was, as long as I, I can leave this awful and painful place, I would be content. After I got married, I became pregnant. As I watched my belly grow bigger and bigger each day, I felt that I had rediscovered happiness in life. Although we were poor, I was happy. I couldn't have asked for anything more. I finally forgot... about what happened in the past. Wait, what's the... Oh, look at me. I'm so embarrassed. His father had made some money and wanted to build a new place to live in. So he hired people to build a few cave houses and combine the other stone pieces after to save a bit of money. My husband would help during his days off. And then the cave houses collapsed. And he was crushed beneath the fallen structures. I'm very unfortunate. Liang Yang was one month old when his father died. Runshan. Tell me something. All I ever did was steal a few handkerchiefs. But ever since then, I've never done anything bad in my life. I've been a good person, I swear. I, I really think that... that all of this is a punishment from God from up above. It's not what you think. What is it, then? You think it's retribution for my grandfather having oppressed the poor in the old days? I've... I've told you my problems. Are you speechless because you've just witnessed how wretched your former classmate is? Not at all. Uh, my hearing's really bad. I don't want people to know so I don't speak much. 
What's wrong with your ear? When I served in the army, it was damaged. I need a hearing aid. Everyone has their own tragic story. If you cannot talk back, I will talk. You listen. After my husband died, I didn't dare hold out much hope for anything else. I believe I was born to endure great hardship for the rest of my life. My only hope, the one I'm living for, is my boy right here. I think that, perhaps God, had a bit of compassion left for me. He felt that I was unfortunate, so he took care of me. You haven't changed at all. Just like Xiao Peng, you speak like a poet. Beautiful words. <laughs> <laughs> what good are words if you can't eat them? Oh, I would do anything just for my son to have a good life. I go to the fields each day to plow the land. Regardless of the cold or heat, I carry him on my back while I'm at it. I heard that there would be a temple fair along the river channel at the mouth of the valley. So I plan to sell some dumplings during the fair to earn some money. I could then use it to buy things for my little boy. I never realized that I would meet you there. Doesn't your family worry for you? <laughs> my father-in-law and my husband's younger brother are both poor too. They can't help me. So you're carrying this burden alone? I'm used to it. This hardship. I don't hear it. A verse of song just now. Can't you hear it? I think that's how the song goes. <laughs> oh, I remember at school. We had sung this song. In the army, too. I've heard our fellow villagers sing it as well. Give it a go, then. I've unloaded your things. I'm off. Leave after you eat. I'm eating at home. But I've already prepared the dumpling wrappers and the stuffing. It's too much and I can't eat them all. It'd be a waste to throw it away. Please stay and have dinner before you leave. You gave me a ride home. If you don't eat this meal, I'd feel really bad. We'll be able to eat soon. This will only take a while. All right? Hmm. Please sit and wait a while. Sure. Hongmei, is it alright if I smoke? Sure. You really look like you're a long-time smoker. The expression on your face is still the same as that in high school. You still remember what I look like? Back then, you'd smoke for no reason every day. When the teacher was absent, you would boldly smoke in class. <laughs> we always watched you. How can I forget? <laughs> Red Crag? I didn't borrow that from the County Cultural Center. I bought it myself. 
I remember back in high school, you and Xiaoping loved this book, but I've never read it. May I borrow it from you? Go ahead. <sighs> Renshen, tell me, are you still in contact with Xiaoping? Xiaoping is still in Shuangshui village. He might go to Huang Yuan. You can still go see him now. <laughs> it was so long ago. After Runshang left, Hao Hongmin somewhat regretted going to the temple fair to sell dumplings. If she hadn't, she wouldn't have run into Runshang. She didn't want to see the faces of her former classmates. She had hoped to quietly spend the rest of her life in a foreign land away from home. Seeing familiar faces would make her recall the life she once had. And the reminder was bitterly and utterly painful. To her, events from the outside world were not only distant, they were practically non-existent. Meanwhile, feelings from the reunion with Hao Hongme were quietly tormenting the spirit of Runshan. The young man felt as if he was suddenly plunged into the ambivalence of untold suffering. This female classmate of his, with whom he was unfamiliar, actually arose his masculine urge to protect those in need. Hey! Hey! hey you get this off! Get this part here. here. Oh, give me that. Let go, let go. Stop give it. it to me. Go away! What are you still doing here? <laughs> hey! Hey, what the, I do? Oh, go mix the clay with Kugao. Go now. Help. Over there. Brother. Go help. Brother. The vehicle bringing the coal stopped at the roadside. It can't come up. Huh? We can only carry them by back. No problem. I'll help you bring them here later. You can't. It's public transport. It has to go. What? It has to leave soon. Then unload the coal by the roadside. Uh, okay. Uh. Don't you mess with me! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Quit fooling around! Mixed clay! Come on! Come on! Go in mixed clay! Go, go! Sen Sha Wan couldn't sleep that night. Fire at the brick kiln will be lit for the first time early tomorrow morning. The young farmer was too excited to go to sleep. On this peaceful, quiet night, his thoughts swelled like a fresh budding flower in the spring. He thought of the past, the present, and the future. Countless past experiences and plans for the future filled his mind that night. A perfectly jumbled mess of never-ending ideas. So what? On Fang Ying, what are you doing here? <laughs> We're all here, look! Xiao Lian, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't come with us. Let's go. Why not? We have to worship our ancestors before lighting the fire. Women aren't allowed. Just come after, okay? Brother. Why are you so traditional? So what if I'm traditional? It's a major event. Women aren't allowed, okay? It's bad luck for you to be there. Brother, I will resist your traditional way of thinking. What? The more you forbid me, the more I will resist you. No, 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 no. Just wait These a minute. are the rules of the village. What do you mean, rules? That's so old-fashioned. So you stop. Chairman Mao said, women can hold up half the sky. Am yes. I right? Yes. So tell me, why is it that women are regarded as unlucky here? Brother, you're opposing Chairman Mao! Don't try to question me, all right? I said no, so that's that. Ha! Ah. I find it strange. When your family was poor, you were begging to have two women from the He family marry into yours. So what, now that life is better and easy for you people, you can dismiss us like this? Father, father, father I already about... said no. No means no. On this matter, what I say counts. No, even if she's a goddess. Shulian, let's go. We're going home. Uh, wait, stop wait, making no, trouble, no, no, please, no. aunt. What trouble? I only told them the truth. If you're not leaving, I will. I oh, wait, wait. Let's go. Uh, aunt, brother. Let's no, go. Auntie. Go after them. Go on, go. But I thought you need people. There are lots of people here. Let's go. Fang Yi, hey, wait watch up. yourself. Let's go. Pay respect to heaven and earth and our ancestors. Kneel. Shawan, 
You're the owner of this kill. Light it up. Yes. Fire, please. Father, look, I think Aunt Fong Yin is serious this time. It's all right. When I go down, I'll talk to her and she'll return. She's not angry with you. Just think, she's not from our village. She's from the city. The lives of city folks have improved by a lot now. Do you think she's happy here? What should we do? How about this? Uncle Wu Tiang can't stop her. I'll go reason with her. Well then, Xiao An, huh? you keep watching. I'll go with Xiao Ping to get your aunt back. All right. I'm off. Huh? There's smoke. Brother, look, smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Feng Yin. Yeah? She home? No. What? Where could they have gone? Okay. Father, you go home and rest. I'll go and How look for them. How can I rest? We must find them soon. There <laughs> you are! <laughs> it's been hard on you all these years! But you can't leave! You can't leave! <laughs> this family will fall apart if you go! Please don't go! Wait! Wait! <laughs> wait what are you doing? She wants to go home for good now! She's been planning it! The fight with your father was just an excuse! I wasted ten years of my life with you in this place! Isn't that enough for you? How many years do I have left? You can leave! But leave the children! Oh, John, calm down! Be sure quiet! Still talk this way. Wait, wait, wait! wait. No, Uncle Wu Tiang! I'll go! Okay! <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Fong Yen, would you really leave your children? My children! I don't have any family left in my hometown. My home is where... is where my children are. <laughs> easily persuaded. Although she was normally tough, she was actually warm-hearted. She had, after all, dedicated her youth and passion to the Sen family and to Shuang Shui village, and had long since put down roots here. She would never leave. Undoubtedly, in the beginning, Runchang's generous offer to help Hong Mei stemmed simply from kindness and sympathy. After having done this for some time, however, Runchang was surprised to find that his feelings seemed to have undergone a subtle change from when he first began helping her. Yes, he was keenly aware that in this poverty-stricken cave house, he experienced so much warmth as he had never done before. Yes, warmth, warmth in his soul. Every time he sat on this brick bed, the fatigue he felt from his travels on the road would completely and immediately melt away. In his heart, he was aware. He knew very well what all this meant. I, I brought you some oil, some food for the boy, as well as toys. There's also some coal in the truck. I'll unload them for you.
Oh, you know.